Lorenzo Beast finally back in. Speaking for you, if you would smash rules you, I'm playing him too. Put your hands together if you want to play. And we'll go through them in PM and Melee. Donkey Kong can actually be quite potent and relevant against the meta characters in Melee. His game is mostly going to consist of tight, grounded play in addition to strong air to airs with back air and up air. Oh my this is god. One of the reasons why the and the occasional punch. Grab will net you a combo that feels too good to be true, but we'll cover that later. Crouch Cancel can be relatively solid as Donkey Kong. He's the second heaviest character in the game, and that bulky body allows for longer CCs than some of the others. He's got some decent attributes with his weight, dash speed, and aerial acceleration. His tilts have some use cases. Up tilt can be a combo extender. F tilt and down tilt can be good pokes. Although F tilt's main purpose is disrespect as nobody enjoys being slapped by a monkey. Down B is a long range special and unique. I don't think I can explain it better than my friend Rishi, so I'll let him go for it. Here you can see I compare DK's down B to Falco's shine, which happens to be another move that sends opponents straight up. You can see that not only is each hitbox of DK's down B larger than Falco's shine, but there are four of them. So you can actually think of DK's down B as summoning four multi-shining Falcos. It can poke, set up for combos, and give DK ASDI down to be safe from counterattacks. Up B might unironically be one of the best moves in the game. An ungodly fast, giant, invincible move that can be used in every aspect of DK's play. Neutral, advantage, disadvantage, punish, recovery, and edge guard. It might truly be a top 10 move in melee, it just happens to be on Donkey Kong. If a character is landing on you or approaching in a predictable way, up B. If a character pressures your shield poorly, up B. If a character challenges your pressure strings, up B. If you need to file your taxes, up B. If you want to improve at Smash, use a multitude of techniques while also maintaining your physical and mental health. And then up B. Yeah, just spam it. The best DKs are all about up B shenanigans. Even aerial up B has its uses. While it thrives as an edge guard, you can get that juicy 30% from the multi hits. Bear is amazing. It is quick, disjointed, and one of the better aerials in the game. It looks a little familiar, huh? It's cool that he has it because it's less good and he's Donkey Kong. When coupled with up B, this massive aerial allows DK to pressure up close with the threat of bear up B and afar with your classic spaced aerials. Some more advanced techniques are things like shield stop bears to maximize drift away. Up air is a very strong move for Donkey Kong. It can be used to pressure on platforms and platform movement. Auto cancel aerials can be quite good for challenging shield drops in the meta. DK can auto cancel up air under a platform safely and even up B to challenge a shield drop. And we all know, up B beats everything. Donkey Kong is the Zangief of melee. He grabs you and tries to kill you, but he's big and clunky. A and he spins sometimes. DK's large hurt box and weird shield can hurt him versus a lot of the cast. A normal shield will easily get you shield poke from the front, but you can manipulate his hurt box with tilt shield and turnaround shields and crouch shields. His tie is a hurt box too, as melee balances using the Incredibles philosophy. However, through the right movement tools, this all can be mitigated. DK might have to work harder in neutral than some of the high tiers. He likes a quick overshoot option like a fox dash and shine, or a fox up smash, or a fox snare. Uh, players will have to get creative to make up for DK's weaknesses facing forward. Stuff like shield stops, B reverse punch cancels, and overshoot punch can allow DK to get really tricky. Through the use of his few functional moves and defensive play, he will eventually transition into his strongest attribute, punish. DK's grab flow charts are some of the best in the game. By pressing forward after getting a grab, DK enters his cargo throw animation. Cargo throw enables you to change your positioning as you input your throw with walking and jumps. And cargo up throw sends vertically. With the correct positioning, cargo up throw confirms into an aerial on most of the cast. Reiterating, up air is an amazing move. It auto cancels, comes out fast, and sends at a perfect angle. A fundamental in DK's combo game is knowing how to use a plat. Positioning is one of the untold fundamentals of melee combos, and getting to a plat with an auto cancel full hop up air or a cargo throw can enable you to still follow up while reducing the length between you and your opponent and your opponent and the blast zone. Versus fast fallers, you generally want to re-grab at very low percents. You can combo up air 
into grab. You can also do a short hop out of your cargo up throw and fast fall to maximize the amount of air time the spacey has in between your up airs. At the mid percents, up airs will continue to link, but we now have the additional DI mixups at play. Bears can combo off the stage into themselves and also up B. Nair can combo into grab. Weak back air can also be used as an extender. Up air strings can end around this percent with bears off the stage or even a fair. If you don't combo into death, don't worry, DK has no lack of kill confirms at the higher percents. Cargo up throw will confirm into up smash, aka the ringler. It will also combo into up B. Donkey Kong can fair, bear, and even F smash. He can tech chase with up air on plats at the low to mid percents and link into his typical combo. If the opponent starts slide off the eyeing, similar counterplay that Marth has for spaces can apply. Donkey Kong destroys fast fallers on the combo game if he ever gets a grab. The hardest part is getting the grab on these little twerps with amazing neutral. Low percent up airs can combo pretty easily versus middleweights. One of my favorite combo setups versus middleweights is cargo, jump up, up throw, double jump up air. This is useful on a stage with a top plat and sets up for a similar up throw combo except it gets you to a plat, which we know can be useful. Mid percents can be room for some DI mixups, like with cargo up throw dare. You can continue to up air for juggle states, or you can link it to bears for edge guard. DIing a DK up air string up will lead to a juggle state, where DK can challenge landings in the air with his up air or up B, or on the ground with an anti-air up B. DIing it away can lead to more up airs anyway, or nares, back airs, and fares off the stage. At higher percents, stuff like full hop, cargo, up throw into double jump fair up air will lead to an easy kill. Versus floaties, low percent up throw up airs are still a viable strategy. At the mid to high percents, combos may start to drop off, but juggle state is still quite good with the mix of up airs and up B, plus some characters will still get confirmed. We have to talk about the elephant in the room, punch. Punch is where the combos become extremely brutal. A fully charged punch is the perfect finisher. It will end up air strings against fast fallers with ease at high percents and confirm off cargo up throw. Versus middleweights, it can be a confirm off cargo up throw and potentially up air strings. Versus floaties, you can do some low percent stuff with it, but you don't end up confirming into it as much. The sheer size and damage and the recovery time required for floaties means you're gonna be getting many, many chances to punch your opponent in neutral. A nine wind punch is stronger than a fully charged punch for reasons. This can be useful to replace fully charged punch as a finisher, albeit slightly more frame tight to land in his combo game. Just don't get hit out of your up B when you have it, or do it off the stage. Dare is similar to your classic Falcon Stomp. It can be edge cancelled to mitigate some of the landing lag and can lead to DK's full combo or a pressure string. DK can tech chase with his grab and meteors like Dare and Fair to add some Falcon Flare to his combo game. You might be noticing something, and that is how good DK's combo game can be across the cast. It is. It's, it's just good. It's, it's just really good. DK's combo game make him almost an anti-meta character. He destroys fast fallers and middleweights on the combo game, which is a lot of the high tiers. Floaties can be harder for him to combo, but still quite good. I would go ahead and say he has one of the best combo games in Melee. It is consistently consistent and not difficult execution-wise. If you want, the DK combo game can be as simple as up air them until they're at kill percent and then punch. His combo game can get as complex as you want it to be though. Through the implementation of things like shield stops, bears, weak hits, meteors, and more, DK can achieve that cool guy persona we all know and want in melee. SDI is useful versus the combo giant that is Donkey Kong up air. I think the best bet is smash DIing DK up airs up and behind him and or DIing to the platforms. He's gonna get another one. The question is how hard can you make it for him? Donkey Kong has no lack of finishers in his kit. At high percents, he can confirm a kill or edge guard off of grab pretty easily. There are some characters he doesn't have this on though, and these matchups can be tougher for him. It's all fun and games until Jigglypuff jumps out of your throw combo. Characters like the Mario Bros have the double benefit of not getting comboed too hard by DK's throws while also destroying him on the combo game. DK has to resort to more bear zoning versus these characters. Up B can set up for an edge guard on bad DI, and both versions can be a useful finisher in aerial strengths. His other cargo throws have niche edge guard potential. You can down throw characters off the stage for a gimp setup or a kamikaze attack. You can back throw characters into the stage with cargo back throw for their classic chump check. You can even cargo F throw and back throw into a double jump aerial or up B mix up if they DI in. This usually isn't worth it compared to the oh so true damage one gets on cargo up throw, 
Plus, longer cargo throw time is more susceptible to mashouts, which ruin DK's combo game in general. In a way, DK is like Puff. He zones you with back air and then tries to get a grab sometimes. He also tries to whiff punish grab you and poke you like Marth. He gets true Build-A-Bear throw combos at most percents like Sheik, while he also auto combos into a finisher like Falcon. He's got a lot of high tier things going for him in his poor mid tier body, but this body takes a beating. He has an average fall speed and huge hurt box, which easily allows characters to exploit him. He gets chain grabbed and juggled and can struggle in the punish and disadvantage. He can up be out of strings as a get off me tool, both grounded and airborne, although this can be punished hard on whiff. And then there's offstage. Is DK's recovery bad? It could be better. We've talked about how wild up B is, but let's reiterate. A fully invincible move that comes out frame two in the air, has three frames of invincibility, and can suck you in. <laughs> it can suck you in for upwards of 30%. How do they both get sucked off? Oh yeah, and his arms are invincible. He maintains extreme control of his horizontal drift while spinning. This allows for a decent drift mix-up when recovering high. Up B can sweet spot the ledge from low and far away, and get around moves like Mark Down Tilt. But it does have a few main drawbacks. Despite your drift, a Rin's repeat edge guard from Invincible Sheik Bear is almost impossible for DK to get back against. But there's also moves like Sheik Needles and Fox Drill, which send him low without giving him the option to tech. The long active frames can be a weakness on the recovery, as the move must go through a certain amount of frames before you can grab ledge with it. Side B can be a useful stall to mix up your recovery timings, but Donkey Kong up B has utility as an edge guarding tool as well. Dropping off the ledge and up being provides a constant hitbox that is mostly invincible. Recoveries that drop down before aiming for ledge, like Marth's or Sheik's, need to get through the invincible hitbox, the multi-hit, and then thread the needle before DK grabs ledge. Because it's a two-frame move, it can also be used to beat recovery behemoths like Spacey Side B on reaction, if you're cracked enough. Bear has a fair amount of utility when contesting higher recoveries. DKs can perform rinse repeat edge guards with stomp and set up for another edge guard or an outright kill. Sometimes a low sweet spot can be hard for DK to cover, as he has no way of getting back to the stage if he goes down to contest it. While a well-timed hack stash or invincible up B from the ledge can cover ledge if timed correctly, he has to win a mix up here. Overall, DK has a lot of potential in the current meta, and is a bit better than his tier list position may suggest. While his neutral is simple, his punish is amazing, and his offstage play has many tricks. He's an anti-meta mid-tier, like a Pikachu, that has some weird strengths and weaknesses. If you want some additional information, I recommend checking the character discords or the Donkey Kong cookbook, both of which I've listed in the description. Or just watch some more DK. Maybe the perception of him as a low tier led to the multitude of buffs he received in Project M. How did they change him? They made him big. Literally. A byproduct of the Brawl engine used in PM is the Brawl character models, and Donkey Kong is noticeably larger. This relative buff increases his range. A lot of his moves in melee have negative disjoint, which means their hurtbox extends beyond the hitbox. This was fixed in PM and buffed his range. Donkey Kong's shield and hurtbox flaws were fixed in Project M. His tie is no longer a hurtbox, which was very dumb. And his shield can actually be used to cover his body. His dash speed was also increased. And his grab is way better. Because of these buffs, the threat of the Donkey Kong grab is way scarier in neutral. In melee, you could get lucky and clip him due to his shield, tie, dash, or a mix of all three. Getting dash dance grabbed, raw grabbed, or shield grabbed are all more likely in PM. His ground game is aided by a set of buffed normals. Jab is quicker and not useless. The second hit will pop up and the first hit can combo as well. On shield, it can be used as a tick throw setup if they start expecting you to finish the jab combo. Down tilt was buffed as well, functioning closer to Marth down tilt at all percents. It's a quick poke that provides DK with hurtbox distortion and conditions opponents for that grab we all know DK wants. Nair is no longer a weak hit move and can be used as a approaching tool. A late nair can be as good as zero on shield. Why did they give the grappler spacey level aerials? Down B is still a useful poke. It combos more than just fast fallers now though, as it meteors. It can lead to DK's full combo while breaking CC and covering the range of four multi-shining Falcos. Dash attack is an homage to the Donkey Kong games instead of just being a foot. It was so good 
that Smash 4 and Ultimate copied it. Anyway, this move is a burst approach with armor on it. It can be used to get off platforms as well. PM's reverse aerial rush mechanic also allows Donkey Kong to approach with his bear. Instead of requiring frame-perfect cancels like Zero Wind, Donkey Kong's bear approach is now easily accessible. These combine to make DK a menace at all ranges, and when he gets in, it's, it's nightmare fuel. The Donkey Kong Punish game was already one of the best in Melee. Now it has become even more consistent. Many characters in Project M are semi-fast fallers, and that's a combo weight that DK eats alive, even in Melee. Have you seen Roy DK in Melee? Hey, what's going on here? Zane, what's going on here? It's brutal. Up here does one more percent, and we all know from my Mario's video that one percent can make a huge difference on hits done for a combo. Cargo up throw and up air combos work similarly as they do in melee, with some new fun options for finishers. Nair is an inherent DI mixup, where DIing out will lead to an edge guard, and DIing in will lead to another Nair. Fair also received a buff, and is still a reliable combo ender to DK's up air strings. Other cargo throws can be utilized now as well. Cargo F throw and back throw can set up for tech chases, chain grabs, and true combos. For characters that aren't as hard comboed by cargo up throw, like floaties, cargo F throw and back throw allow for a very consistent throw follow up. Cargo F throw and back throw is an inherent DI mix up, a true 50 50. DK can operate like a sheik. Stuff like platform tech chasing is mitigated by having this setup. If you get hit at 50%, you best believe death is incoming. Donkey Punch is consistently the combo ender for this character. In this way, Donkey Kong could snowball in his punish game. He gets his punch after taking a stock, which means after a stock, an errant confirm could lead to death. In melee, Donkey Kong loses his punch easily and doesn't have the oppressive neutral to set it up willy-nilly, as he must play pretty defensively. PMDK's punch essentially gives him clutch box factor every single game. But June, just DI off the stage. You thought you were safe off the stage? Punch no longer sends into freefall. His combo game isn't without flaws though, as he still has to win DI mixups to get consistent combos versus floaties. His up B is still one of those everything moves. It's just all of his other moves are so good you barely need it. Donkey Kong's recovery has better drift, acceleration, and better overall damage and knockback. I'm better! Ledge occupancy was reduced in PM, which can make the timing for using ledge rolls to punish up B pretty tricky. A single mistimed roll could lead to a reversal against a character with one of the best punish games. He has all the melee stuff with another move, down B in the air. DK can cover angles he wasn't able to before, and it serves as a useful stall. His recovery used to be nigh unedge guardable in PM due to invincibility and a lack of landing lag. However, in P+, because of the dev team trying to nerf recoveries across the board, he has more end lag. While DK can be confirming kills on the stage, if he happens to set up for an edge guard, his combination of high knockback moves and edge guarding tools make most characters tremble. I feel partially responsible for the virus that is P+, PM DK, because I used to think he was fine. Gods did we all underestimate him. Oh, just zone him out, we thought. Well, DK's dash speed and nair and punch make it really hard to camp him. A heavy with the best punish game and an unbelievably tricky neutral and offstage game. He's hard to kill and easy to kill with. DK's unique attributes make him one of the best characters in tournament. Thunder's reign showed the dominant consistency of DK in the Project M meta while also just being a lovable goofball. We didn't know until several more top players started playing the Great Ape. Don't believe me? Here's Stango, one of the best P plus players in the world with Donkey Kong. I think what makes DK so good in P plus is a pretty involved explanation, but in a simple way, DK is just strictly net buffed from melee, where his punish game strengths were already a bit of an outlier. Couple with new neutral tools and attribute buffs that make him more deep as character and less susceptible to the abuse of low tier attributes like bad shield, slow movement, and linear neutral options. I think removing a lot of the degenerate options such as grounded down B and reducing the accessibility or power of his strong finishers like punch and maybe forward air can make him a bit more forgiving when facing off against him. But unfortunately, every time you nerf DK, he does become stronger. So I'm afraid we'll all have to live with this mistake we've created. I will go ahead and admit my bias here. Ask any top PM player. I am one of the number one Donkey Kong haters. Do I wake up in a cold sweat, remembering all the times Thunder Zero deathed me? Maybe. 
Thunders is a great player. Stango is a great player. But that doesn't change my dislike of Donkey Kong's design in PF. He has a little bit of everything, and I feel like they strayed from the initial limitations of his grappler archetype. This doesn't mean I hate PM or P+, though, as I hate particular characters in almost every Smash game. Donkey Kong is a funny monkey. It's funny that the funny monkey character grabs you and kills you, and I think this is part of the reason that PM buffed him so much. Nobody thought Donkey Kong would have this much potential, and I'm here to tell you, the sky is the limit with Donkey Kong. A heavy grappler character that can zone you out, scrap with invincible and disjointed options, and straight up kill you with a single grab. And balance is hard. Maybe maybe he needs everything. Give him a barrel projectile too. I feel like Brawl Minus nailed it.